선생님 이거 봐요 What? 우리 전시회에 초대받았는데요? An ambassador invited us 맞아요 전시회에서 촬영하게 됐어요 I think there will be some difficulties filming 어떤 어려움이요? I go to the Seoul Arts Center to take walks and this exhibition always packed with people 아 그래요? Yes 그러면 전시회장을 통으로 빌려버릴까요? The entire place? 네, 빌려버려요, 통으로. 돈으로 해결합시다. Okay, I'll contact the exhibition hall. Do we need it all day? 아, 무슨 하루 종일이에요. 하루 종일까지 필요가 없어요. 한 시간만. 한 시간이요? One hour. 네, 돈이 없어서 그러는 게 아니라 한 시간이면 충분해요. It's not that we don't have money. One hour is enough. 아 지금 그런 말은 굳이 여기 적지 말고요. 여기 여기 이 부분 여기는 삭제해 주세요. 그냥 빌릴 수 있냐고만 물어보라고요 일단. 아 오케이. 저는 지금 예술의 전당에 와 있습니다. 여기 보이세요? 예술의 전당 오프레 극장. 저희는 오늘 예술의 전당에서 열리는 전시회에서 한 대사님을 만나기로 했는데요. 어떤 대사님일지 또 어떤 연시회일지 지금 가보겠습니다. 어우 추워. 날씨가 너무 춥습니다. 오 저기 와 계세요. The ambassador we are meeting today is. Hello. Hi, Hello. ambassador. Hi. Hi. How are you? The ambassador of Egypt. And the exhibition we are going to today is called Egypt Land of Discoveries. But who is the person next to the ambassador? I'd like to introduce oh. uh, my very good friend. Uh, she's an artist mm -hmm. and uh, she is also a painter. So how did you first become friends? Well, we met in, in, in one of the diplomatic functions mm -hmm. and then this exhibition came and uh, I thought as a uh, Korean artist, mm -hmm. uh, why not to come and see as Egypt, you know, is the beginning of art. Mm -hmm. We say, we have a saying that mm -hmm. Egypt came and then history came and art came and, you know, civilization came. So uh, I invited Sunga and she said, yes, I would like to come. So we came on the opening of this exhibition. Yeah. Songa, who is fascinated by Egyptian culture, uses a lot of Egyptian culture elements as a subject of her artworks. I heard there are a lot of people coming to this exhibition, so we rented this place for an hour before okay. it opens, very so we good. can freely move around, around. the exhibition. Yes. Yes. Well, that'd be very special, wow. yes, yes, definitely. So, wow. Shall we go upstairs and yes. take a look around? Yes, definitely. Okay. Let's make this go. Mm -hmm. Now, we are going to take a closer look at the exhibition. The ambassador will be the special docent for the diplomat talks today. When you enter the exhibition hall, you can see fantastic media art. It felt like I was traveling back in time to ancient Egypt. Just bringing it into life, you know. Oh, like it wasn't just buildings mm -hmm. or temples mm -hmm. or you know statues, mm -hmm. but it was bringing it more into our life, mm -hmm. our contemporary life, mm -hmm. which is a lot now full of technology, oh. you know. And uh, Korea is very advanced in that, so oh. it brings the two cultures together. Oh. <gasps> what was the exhibit that surprised me? Wow. It was the coffin that kept the mummy. And these colors are original colors. You really? Know? Yes. Wow. Do you know how these colors were preserved? Uh, the preservation, I, I'm not sure, but mm -hmm. as for the colors, they are all coming from nature. And I think Sunga, as an artist, can uh -huh. tell us a little bit more mm -hmm. about uh, how colors are preserved for longer times. Mm -hmm. 
do? Well, actually, these days we yeah. use a lot of chemical stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I'm so amazed that the this colors come from nature. Yeah, because back in the times there weren't any chemicals. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And you know why it has a face? Mm -hmm. Because there is a concept in, in ancient Egyptian history mm -hmm. that when the soul leaves the body mm -hmm. to go uh, and uh, be asked about what he did good or bad in his lifetime, this soul eventually is going to come back to the body at one point. Mm -hmm. So how will he know his body? Mm -hmm. It will come back knowing by the face. So every face would be different. Every face is resembling a, a personality, mm. oh. a certain personality. Mm. I could tell that the ancient Egyptians meticulously prepared for life after death. And here she's holding the key of life. Key of life? Yes, oh. this was a resemblance of the key of life. Mm. Yeah. What do we have here? Well, we have the map here, which uh -huh. is important for this civilization to flourish. Oh. As you can see, the River Nile is all the way across Egypt. Mm -hmm. This was the cause for the Egyptian civilization to flourish. It was based on agriculture, mm -hmm. because the River Nile used to flood, mm -hmm. and there was the different seasons. Mm -hmm. This is a replica of the Rosetta Stone. Uh -huh. The original one is in the British Museum. And this was the first like dictionary to decipher the Egyptian hieroglyphics. Mm. French expedition in Egypt, they found this stone, they took it back to France, and then during the British and French uh, uh, wars, mm -hmm. the British uh, took it through a treaty with France, mm -hmm. and then they put it in the British Museum. Mm -hmm. And uh, we have our famous professor, Dr. Zay Hawes. He is now leading a petition around the world to retrieve back the Rosetta Stone. And as you know, Egypt uh, has uh, completed now the Grand Egyptian Museum, mm -hmm. which is going to be the biggest museum to have all the artifacts of Egypt. So we hope one day to see it uh, displayed in Egypt very soon. I was going to ask you about why these artifacts are from the Netherlands. Well, actually, they are from the Netherlands and uh, the Egyptian artifacts are all over the world. They are in many museums. These artifacts were coming out of Egypt through many years by uh, those who went for expeditions. At that time, there was no uh, regulation or law that forbids, uh, but uh, we are definitely following all illegal trade and uh, 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 that is being sold in the international market, uh, in auction houses, international auction houses, because there are some uh, criminal groups that are trading in, in such artifacts. Egypt, the birthplace of a brilliant ancient civilization. However, as splendid as it was, it became the target of constant invasion and suffered the pain of their artifacts being plundered. It's a history of humanity. It's not only history of Egypt. It belongs to Egypt, but we share it with the world. And this is why I'm very glad that the Museum of Leiden has brought this to the Korean people to enjoy and to really, you know, get this people-to-people -people connection. Mm. And he has some kind of power, I don't know, like a magnetic. <laughs> yes, yeah, 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 I, I agree, I totally yeah. agree with you. As the ambassador had hoped for, all of these artifacts were able to come all the way to Korea, and many Koreans were able to appreciate traces of ancient Egypt's magnificent civilization in front of their eyes. Until today, mm. we are finding new findings. Yeah. You know, oh, just yesterday, yes. mm -hmm. uh, Dr. Zai Hawes announced uh -huh. uh, in Saqqara mm -hmm. that they have just uh, excavated, you know, magnificent pieces. In January, 
A gold-laced mummy was discovered in a sarcophagus that was opened for the first time in 4,300 years. This mummy is presumed to be the remains of Hekashepis. It is thought to be the oldest and most complete mummy of a non-royal person. Egyptologists have uncovered a pharaonic tomb near the capital Cairo, and a total of four mummies, including the one covered in gold, were found near the Steppe Pyramid at Saqqara. The other mummies were also royal officials, including the Keeper of Secrets, a judge and a priest. I wondered if Egypt was also cooperating with Korea in the area of excavating ancient relics. Actually, uh, the Korean uh, Heritage Administration signed an MOU with Egypt mm -hmm. to restore uh, two uh, temples. Mm -hmm. And I think Korea definitely can play a very big role with its technological advances and the artist in restoring a lot of the ancient Egyptian monuments, definitely. Yeah. I'm glad to yeah. hear that. Yeah. And I wondered what the ancient Egyptians thought about the afterlife. And this is uh, part of the Book of the Dead. They believe there is a journey after mm. death. So I think yeah. afterlife is yes, very afterlife. important. Yes. Actually, yeah. um, every culture they prefer afterlife, yeah. but um, the most um, detailed preparation is in Egypt. Yes, yes. <laughs> so yeah. people yeah. are just mm. like yeah. it's amazing. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. amazing. The ancient Egyptians' strong belief in the eternal afterlife is related to the Osiris myth. Just as Osiris was killed by his brother Seth and then resurrected with the help of his wife Isis to become king of the afterlife, ancient Egyptians believed they could also live forever. The ancient Egyptians regarded death as a brief journey through the afterlife. They believed that when that journey ended, they would return to their dead body and they could enjoy eternal life. They used to take out the organs mm. from the body. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's a famous uh, drawing and painting where they put the heart on a weighing machine mm -hmm. and a feather on the other side. Oh. So if the heart is heavier, mm -hmm. then it means the man or the woman, she did, let's put it in a very simple term, bad things in life. But if oh. her heart is as light as the feather, it means it was a good oh, person. Oh, that's so interesting. <laughs> I wanted to ask you what inspired you to create artwork related to this exhibition? Actually, <laughs> um, Egyptian art is so beautiful and it's also very magical and it's still developing like Korean art. Actually, um, it's very modern actually in other ways. It was a good inspiration for me. <laughs> now, it is time to go see the highlights of this exhibition. The coffins with different faces were standing as if they were welcoming us. And I was able to see the mummy of someone who died thousands of years ago lying in the exhibition hall. Everyone wants to live forever, so exactly. um, yes. about the I mummy think, part, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> maybe that was why I loved something mm. about Egypt. I want to live yeah. forever mm. also. Yes, yes, <laughs> I think the Egyptian civilization was able to conquer this. Talk Talks Quick Facts Mummies are one of the symbols of ancient Egyptian civilization. How did they make mummies? Step 1. The brain and all internal organs are removed from the dead person's body after it is washed clean. All organs except the brain were stored in canopic jars. However, the heart was not removed because it was thought to be an organ needed for thought and emotions. It was also judged to be needed in the afterlife. Step 2. After the organs are removed, the body is then filled with natrin to absorb remaining moisture and is left to completely dry for around 40 days. Step 3. After around 40 days, the body is washed with river water and sawdust or pieces of cloth are placed inside the body to maintain its shape. 
Step 4. The mummification process is finally complete when the body is wrapped in linen. Afterwards, the mummy is covered with a mask and placed in a sarcophagus. Ancient Egyptian mummies that were made in preparation for the resurrection believing in the afterlife. They felt that it represents a human desire to live forever. Unwrapping the mummy mm -hmm. is like you would destroy it, you know, if you unwrap it. But mm -hmm. with technology now, but I think they still need to know the secret about it. Mm -hmm. they're, they're still finding out what is the secret about it. Looking through the exhibition, I felt mankind has made a lot of progress from ancient times to present. But I came to hope that instead of always looking forward and running, humanity could look back at history and stop to spend time reflecting on the past. Where do you think we went next? Oh, here it is. Here Yes, we are at the gallery where Soma's solo exhibition is being held. Diverse colors. Eyes shown close up. Flashy media art. The first thought that came to my mind when I saw her works was intense. You know, in 2025, we will celebrate 30 mm -hmm. years of diplomatic relations. Mm -hmm. And I think this painting could be the logo for oh. this celebration. Oh, great idea, yeah. great yeah. idea. Great idea. Yeah. Oh. We say great. Yeah. Oh. You have a lot of paintings of Thank camels. You. Um, I'm drawing this camel to mm -hmm. symbolize modern people. So that's a, it's reality. We're living in this frustrating world. Mm -hmm. If we think, oh, life is too hard, we can't live. So we always have to dream something happy. Mm -hmm. So we have to, so all my camels are closing his eyes mm -hmm. and dreaming. Mm -hmm. Oh, life will be better. So then the desert becomes fancy. Oh. And in this painting, it goes to a journey to the afterworld. <laughs> oh. The afterworld. Yes. So I see you have some see. resemblances oh. of Egyptian. Yes. It also yes. connects yeah. with the Egyptian culture. Yeah. Oh. And she showed us an artwork that was inspired yes. by the Egyptian my exhibition. My favorite. <laughs> my favorite one. Oh. Yeah, my favorite goddess in Egypt, Ra. There's a secret in this painting. Secret? Uh, oh. What can you guess? In this painting, I see a lot of Egyptian things, but I also see very Korean, traditional exactly. Korean things like these. Yes. yes. These. Bingo. Yeah. 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 This is actually a uh, uh -huh. Yeah, yeah a Korean yeah. traditional cloth. Yeah. So this is the cloth. Uh, so this is oh. using mixture uh -huh. of uh, Oh, materials in the painting. Oh, it suits here. This so the this, sun. yeah. Oh. Oh. This is yeah. truly the yeah. mixture of Korean and Egyptian culture. Yes, yes, I love this. Yes, I love yeah. this. I didn't name it yet. I was going to ask you. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you could. Well, you can, you can name the painting. always think of something, but uh, Ra's journey to Korea. <gasps> That's oh. good. Ra's it. journey to Korea.
Isn't it wonderful to have two cultures come together to create something completely new? I wonder if there is an Egyptian artist that inspired. Actually, I would like to bring yeah, Egyptian artists to, to Korea. Maybe, maybe you can do the collaboration. Yes, with yes, definitely. Yeah, she would be the, the ambassador of Egyptian art mm -hmm, in yeah. Korea. Let's go. <laughs> Through these two exhibitions, I was able to see that there was a wonderful collaboration between Korean and Egyptian culture. After watching the exhibitions, the ambassador invited us to a special place. Welcome to the Egyptian kitchen. He specially prepared Egyptian food for us. So this is uh, koshari. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is a very traditional Egyptian uh, dish. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The last chapter for today's collaboration of Korean and Egyptian culture is food. Bimbap plus omurais. Ah, Is it similar to bimbap? I think it's interesting you put both rice and noodles. You will not think that they match mm -hmm. together, but oh. it does taste very nice. Mm -hmm. It's really nice. <laughs> The next food we are going to try is tagen. You know what? This is so good. I want this more. <laughs> <laughs> it's very similar mm. to Korean hemulchim, mm -hmm. but hemulchim is very spicy and hot, uh -huh. but it's more like okay. mild taste. Yes. And I think it's based on tomato sauce. Mm -hmm. mm. I think Koreans will love this. That's another cultural connection that we want to have with Korea is to introduce really Egyptian food mm -hmm. because really the Egyptian uh, table or the Egyptian food is a festive food because it has developed over many centuries. Mm -hmm. We were talking about history in the yes. museum mm -hmm. and you will find that each dish has a history mm -hmm. actually. And this is a very traditional, uh, it's called nice. green soup. We call it molokheya. I thought it was like seaweed. It looks, no, like, it looks like seaweed, seaweed, but it's not seaweed. It's a plant and it only grows in Egypt. The chef showed us how Egyptians eat this soup. <laughs> and look how it looks like. It's oh. like the ear of the cat. <laughs> so this is the humor, humor in the Egyptian. Uh, so you eat it like this with the bread. Ah. Okay, let me try so one. You want to try yes. the Egyptian way yes, or the fold it like this? Yeah, and then you, as if you can. Yes, yes, yes exactly. You create okay. it as if it's a spoon. Okay. Yeah. Because with the bread, it tastes much nicer. Mm. It looks very healthy mm. with the green yeah. leaves, but it tastes good as well. I don't know how to describe. Yeah. You're like eating nature. Yeah. Yes, mm. yes. Mm. Yeah, eating nature different. and flower. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Very unique. Yes. Mm. I brought some Korean food as well, yeah. so it's I would like nice. to um, bring it. On my way to the embassy, I prepared some special Korean food that the ambassador would like. Mmm. That's very tasty. Really? Mmm. Mm. Last time you tried hammer pajang yeah. and today is this pinned is dog. Which mm. is better of your choice? <laughs> this one is lighter, uh -huh. right? Yeah. Mm, it's yeah. only it's very top. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Are you okay with spicy? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I think I can, can, can handle it. 
Do you like it? Very nice. Huh? <laughs> Interesting. The ingredients mm -hmm. are very similar. Yeah, mm -hmm. right, right. Mm -hmm. I think it's interesting with similar ingredients, you create different tastes. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So speaking of the cultural collaboration, do you have any plans to cooperation in culture field this year? Yes, actually, um, this year we are hoping to have uh, an Egyptian film festival oh. in uh, Korea. Mm. Also, I would like to bring some artists like Songa was mentioning, you mm. know, that we have collaboration between Korean artists mm -hmm. and uh, Egyptian artists. Mm. Songa told me about the project that you participate mm -hmm. with other Korean artists. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're Can planning, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. including me, mm -hmm. um, several artists from Korea, we're planning to go to Egypt and um, we'll display our artwork mm -hmm. and we're planning to do some media artwork oh. and some live um, painting mm -hmm. art performance mm -hmm. there and then some photograph shooting. Mm -hmm. After that, um, the live painting, results of the painting and the photograph and everything, mm -hmm. we'll bring that to Korea again mm -hmm. and then do the exhibition here mm -hmm. in Korea again. Mm -hmm. So it will be always continuing. Oh, yeah, it will be a fun project. Oh, sounds like you have a lot of big and fun plans. Yes, yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. I, part of our diplomatic activity is mm -hmm. to bring people together. Mm -hmm. And bringing people together is through art and culture mm -hmm. is the best ways. Mm -hmm. Our economic relationship is very strong mm -hmm. and our uh, uh, relationship is really growing. But in this aspect of culture, it is important, especially for the youth mm -hmm. in both countries. Mm -hmm. I would really like to see more Korean youth visiting mm -hmm. Egypt, knowing Egypt mm -hmm. more, mm -hmm. and also youth from Egypt coming mm -hmm. to Korea and understanding a little bit more about the Korean culture, mm -hmm. which is very popular in Egypt, by the way. Today, I was able to feel firsthand that a great synergy can be created when the different cultures of two countries come together. So one, two, action! Yes, actually, I've been here a few mm -hmm. times. Oh. Thank you. My gift for oh, you. Thank you. Thank, thank you very much. King and Queen. Can you introduce yourself? <laughs> I want to be in a place that has a lot of kinds of cultures and rich culture like Korea. They also have uh, this kind of heritage. <laughs>